Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew Stott, I'm the Emperor of Stemeria, and today I want to talk about the differences between simulationism and secessionism within the micronational community. So for our more regular viewers, you will once again see that I have tried to change up the setup uh, a little bit just to give it a bit more life in the background. Um, I don't know quite how this is going to work, um, only because, uh, you know, the lighting might be a bit of an issue in trying to control the, uh, the environment in which I'm filming, depending on what time of day it is, uh, because of the open window. But we're going to give it a go because I quite like this little setup. I quite like the, the aesthetics of it all. So uh, we're going to give this one a go and we'll see how that goes, but maybe for the next few videos we'll try this and then maybe we'll try something else until we find the right, the right setup for us. Um, now, I was quite hesitant to actually make this video um, because, you know, everyone and their cousin has their own opinion on uh, simulationism versus secessionism versus, you know, uh, realism versus fantasy micronations. And there's just so much to discuss and unbox that I think I would struggle to uh, cover everything in a single video in any reasonable depth. But we're going to give it a go. I'm going to try to keep everything as broad strokes as possible so we can sort of get through this. Um, but uh, I think the, the first thing to say is that Micronations, you know, uh, Micronationalism is a, is a platform that people can use to promote certain values, certain objectives, certain ideas, or just to have fun with. It's similar in that sense to, say, a political party or a charitable organisation or a campaign group or a business. It is a platform in which to promote something or to do something with. But unlike all of those things, when it comes to micronationalism, uh, there's no arbiter, there's no paperwork, there's no fees or legalities that you need to adhere to. So it's a case of, you know, someone thinks up a name and a flag in their head and, hey presto, you've got a micronation, and they disappear just as quickly. And this obviously makes it quite easy for micronations to be established, and uh, obviously very easy for micronations just to dissolve, go inactive, and just fall by the wayside. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, even within the micronational community, struggle to get to grips with defining what exactly a micronation is, um, just purely because there is such a, an ease in which it can be formed. And, you know, one person's definition of a micronation will be different from another's. So, for instance, you'll have, a, you know, I think micronationalism as a broad, broad spectrum, as a broad idea, I think the bare minimum, the bare basics, is that it is a uh, an entity which has claimed sovereignty over a particular territory, but doesn't exercise genuine sovereignty, and that sovereignty isn't recognised by uh, macronations or the you know na nations as more commonly referred to of the world. Uh, but even this very quite broad definition doesn't really include um, some micronations who don't have a territory to claim sovereignty over. Um, either because they don't claim territory or because they don't own uh, the territory that they reside on or however else you, you want to describe it. You know, they don't, uh, they don't have sovereignty in that sense. 
Um, but equally, there are people, large numbers of people, that will describe an entity as a micronation, but that entity doesn't itself describe itself as a micronation, if that makes sense. So uh, an obvious example of this is Liberland, in, in that, uh, you know, they don't describe themselves as a micronation, they describe themselves uh, as a sovereign nation, which is what a lot of micronations themselves describe themselves as. But they don't describe themselves as, as a micronation, whereas others will. Um, but, you know, that's just one example of, you know, someone else describing something as a micronation, even though that something doesn't describe itself as a micronation, if that makes sense. So it's a bit of a confusing premise to all this, but I just wanted to sort of explain uh, as concisely as I can that this is quite a confusing topic because there is no consensus in the community as to what a micronation is. There's no consensus, uh, you know, globally as to what a micronation is. You can have, you know, approximate definitions and uh, general, um, general acceptance of what a micronation might be, but at the end of the day there's always outliers, there's always people who say that's not a micronation, and then there's other people that say, yes, it is a micronation. You're never going to cons get consensus on it. Um, and I think that is going to form part of the premise of this entire video. But as I said, I want to keep this as simple as I can to try and sort of narrow down uh, particular issues within the micronational community itself. Because when people hear the name micronation, they don't necessarily have any interest or uh, knowledge about delving into the different... Uh, areas in which micronationalism dwells. You know, there's quite a wide spectrum of what a micronation is, what it's doing, and all the rest of it. And uh, more often than not, it comes down to the argument between uh, simulationism and secessionism. And this is something I want to focus on in particular, because I've always had the same general view on this particular topic. And that general view can be summarised as all micronations are simulationist and no micronation is secessionist. And this is, of course, just my view based on, you know, <laughs> based on reality as far as I'm concerned. Uh, other people will have obviously different opinions on this. But uh, I just want to walk you through the, my rationale for this uh, position that I have. So a micronation is not a nation. A micronation is simulating uh, what a nation is. It is replicating what a nation is. And by that very action, it is sim a simulationist. It is not a real nation. It is not a real sovereign nation. It is merely claiming to be a sovereign nation and has a government and a flag and maybe an economy <clears throat> or a monetary system and various laws or rules and regulations, which even though they might have a probably completely unenforceable. Um, so it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a micronation. A micronation is just trying to simulate and emulate and replicate what a nation is. And in that sense, all micronations to some degree or another are simulationist. Now, my reasoning for saying that no micronation is secessionist, I think is, I don't know, I don't want to ruffle too many feathers necessarily, but you know, a genuine secessionist movement doesn't describe itself as a micronation. I mean, it really is as simple as that. I mean, if you don't, you can't go to genuine, uh, you know, secessionist groups, you know, close to home, uh, you might have the uh, Scottish National Party or uh, the Welsh National Party, Plai Cymru, or, you know, various other you know, English nationalist groups, they're looking to secede from the United Kingdom. They are, you know, secessionist movements because they're, um, you know, well, they're trying to attain genuine sovereignty for genuine nations with, you know, genuine people with genuine culture and genuine history. And that's not the same as uh, a hodgepodge of, you know, more often than not, teenage boys from different parts of the world uh, that think it's a be a cool idea to break away from the macronation in which they're based in. It's not really the same thing. I mean, you're never going to get a secessionist movement, a genuine secessionist movement, to align themselves with a micronation. Um, 
because it's that they're two different animals. Uh, you know, a micronation is more akin to a uh, a hobby or a lifestyle or, you know, uh, an attempt to promote certain values or objectives. And even those micronations that claim to be secessionist and uh, point to various micronations which they define as secessionist, um, those micronations that they point to either don't define themselves as secessionist or are clearly not secessionist. For example, some of the most popular micronations in the world, uh, Molossia, for example, you know, it describes itself as a genuine independent sovereign nation, as most micronations do, but it is not actually looking to secede from the United States of America, and it has no plans to. That's, that's not the intention of Molossia. I mean, People, when I see people saying Melossia is a hardcore secessionist movement, a hardcore secessionist micronation, and at the same time they're, you know, what is it, using cookie dough as their currency? And their space program is, you know, one of those little kitty rockets that get shot up into the air? I mean, you, you can't call that a secessionist movement, because that's not what they're striving to do. Um, and, you know, other examples, again, close to home, the Principality of Sealand. People go, oh, that's a hardcore secessionist micronation. It, it depends what your definition of a hardcore secessionist micronation is. Um, because, you know, the, sea, the Principality of Sealand, it sells passport covers. The, the actual founders, the, the leaders, the princes of Sealand, they live in the United Kingdom. They have businesses and homes in the United Kingdom. You know, it's, they're, they're not on the, 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 the platform, the man-made platform in the middle of the ocean which, for those who don't know, is in fact in British territorial waters and has been for, I don't know, what, 30 years or more? So, you know, it, it's within uh, British territorial waters, it's part of the British territory. Um, you know, the, the platform itself is a man-made platform, which, as far as I know, is, uh, certainly was, and as far as I know, it certainly is, uh, as far as I know, still is, uh, for sale um, for hundreds of millions of dollars, if I remember correctly. So, you know, if you consider Sealand, which for all accounts is just a uh, a business venture which sells titles to people and is in itself, you know, quite willing to be sold to some, I don't know, private developer or something, um, is that a real secessionist micronation? One that's looking, you know, it's another one, the Principality of uh, Hutt River, um, that's since dissolved. Um, they call that a genuine secessionist movement or they described it as a genuine secessionist movement. But the reality is uh, they dissolved the micronation and as I understand it, they sold all if not, well, they sold most of, if not all of their land, their holdings to pay back um, the uh, the taxes that they owed to the Australian government, which they hadn't been paying. So, you know, this is, uh, yeah, yeah. When, when I see people describe themselves as a secessionist, or when I see other micronations um, pointing to examples of what a secessionist micronation is supposed to look like, I really just don't get it, because it just doesn't happen that way. It's not the same thing. Um, so, <laughs> I, I mean, just as a, a little side note, I have noticed that a lot of the sort of hardcore secessionist micronations uh, that uh, form part of the community, um, <laughs> the first thing I tend to notice is that uh, they often struggle to actually even spell secessionist. They spell it successionist for some reason. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's just a little side point I want to make. It's normally quite clear uh, you know, how serious they are in terms of a secessionist movement if they can't even spell secessionism or secessionist. So that's just another little aside fact. But I think it's primarily promoted by uh, younger people because they think that's what a micronation is, that's what a micronation does. It strives to secede from the macronation that they're a part of. Uh, when reality, that's, uh, you know, never happened. Um, <clears throat> certainly not in the way that we would today define as a micronation. Um, as opposed to, say, you know, civilizations in antiquity, um, where, you know, you could arguably define a lot of things as micronations. Uh, but in the modern era, um, the idea of a micronation attaining genuine sovereignty, genuine independence, it's just never going to happen. Because, you know, no, 
even if, for example, the Empire of Stemeria, uh, you know, we have established monetary system, established government, and so we purchased 10,000 acres of land in uh, the British Isles, and we had a massive permanent population, and they were all full, you know, they were forced to marry it. No, there are literal nations in the United Kingdom, Scotland being an obvious example, which is still a part of the United Kingdom, but despite having a massive secessionist uh, movement in Scotland. Um, so it, what, is the what are the chances of uh, the United Kingdom government or any government saying, yep, you've got all the criteria for an actual nation, you seem to be doing all right for yourself, You're, uh, you can secede from the macronation, you can secede from the country and do your own thing. It's just not going to happen. Um, the, the only way it could conceivably happen would be if there was some global apocalyptic event uh, that caused the splintering of nation states around the world. And even in that sort of situation, I think the chances are people aren't going to go, uh, oh, what about that micronation that that guy set up a few years ago? I wonder if that's still going. Maybe he would like to lead the, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the future nations of the world. Um, you know, uh, aside from that uh, very unlikely um, uh, future, you know, micronations aren't going to become sovereign nations in their own right. And so if that is the case, then describing yourself as a secessionist movement is really just pointless. It's really just, you know, uh, just, it's, it's just something for you to say or talk about but it's not something that's actually going to be born in reality. So again, this is why I think that this whole debate about secessionism versus um, simulationism is, is pointless, because like I say, I think all micronations are simulationist and no micronation is genuinely secessionist. And if they were genuinely secessionist, they wouldn't describe themselves as a micronation. And uh, I, I think going on a bit further than this, just touching on this a little bit further, another sort of couple of terminologies that are banded about is realism versus fantasy. So realist micronations versus fantasy micronations. And this, how, this holds a bit more credence to it in the sense that, you know, micronations are a spectrum in the sense that you have quite serious micronations that are looking to promote a certain... Um, objective or campaign on a certain issue, environmentalism, human rights, democratic reform, whatever it might be. And then there's other micronations on the other end of the spectrum, which are, you know, in it for the satire, in it for the jokes, in it for the I'm a king or a queen or a president, look at me, la la la, you know, that kind of vibe. And then there's everything in between from, you know, building real world communities to, uh, you know, just um, having a, a side hobby, which you take quite seriously, but you don't dedicate much time or dedicate much of your life to. Um, but, you know, it's, there's, there's a massive spectrum of micronations out there. And I think the sort of realist versus fantasy micronations does have a bit more credence to it in the sense that uh, there are micronations that take everything a bit more seriously. And depending on what they're trying to do, they have to take it more seriously. For instance, the Empire of Samaria obviously is looking to build a real world community. It's looking to build a real world trade network, We're working to build a... Uh, uh, a community that's more self-reliant in the sense that's reducing reliance on and contributions to the United Kingdom through legal and legitimate means. So a sort of de facto independence by the back door, if you like. At no point do we uh, are we under any illusion that genuine sovereignty is not something that we can necessarily attain, um, but we can certainly take steps to uh, provide more for ourselves. So, you know, growing our own food, producing our own electricity or energy, <clears throat> you know, uh, reducing our contributions um, in terms of taxes through legal and legitimate means and, uh, you know, providing our own water, you know, just being more off grid, I suppose. Um, th those sorts of things are some things that you can accomplish, but you obviously have to take things a bit more seriously. You can't just be like a meme micronation, um, which do exist. Um, there are micronations that are just memes. And, uh, you know, obviously in that sense, there are sort of uh, fantasy micronations and realist micronations, but it's not uh, a reason necessarily to sort of f focus too much on those differences. Um, because, you know, f someone from looking from the outside looking in will just see it all as uh, a bit, you know, a childish, childish nonsense. 
for the most part. I mean, you know, micronations are very numerous, but compared to the you know global population, uh, it's you know they're very few and far between. Um, so I think you just have to you know, relax when it comes to differentiating uh, micronations from one another in that sense, because again, you're never going to get real consensus. The only real thing you can do as a micronation is rather than worrying about whether or not a micronation or your micronation is a realist micronation or a fantasy micronation or a secessionist micronation or a simulationist micronation, is just to decide what it is you are looking to do and then look to cooperate or work with or integrate yourselves with micronations that have similar objectives to you and take it as seriously as you do or not as seriously as you do, depending on where you are on that spectrum. Um, I think really the people that make a big deal out of whether or not you're a simulationist or a secessionist in particular is uh, they are desperate for some sort of, I'm trying to think of the world, a conflict and a, some sort of aggression within the community. They want to justify their own existence by trying to purge it of undesirables, frankly. I mean, I've seen it time and again in Reddit or uh, Twitter or Discord or whatever else. You'll have these jumped up teenagers in their parents' back garden, you know, angrily waving their fist in the air on social media going, we don't want these simulationists, these simmies, these LARPers, these cosplayers, these uh, these unrealistic, un, uh, you know, fantasy micronations. We don't want them in the community. We should expel them from the community. We should, you know, set up our own groups and, you know, keep them separated and segregated because they're not serious secessionist micronations like we are. No. Um, and this is, this is it. This is why I think this is such a big deal. It's because tr people try to make it a big deal. Um, and when tr people try to make it a big deal, they want to, you know, try to separate people into an us and them. And then there's this conflict or battle. I see it all the time, not just between the whole simulationist versus secessionist thing, but I see it, um, some micronations just looking to pick fights with someone um, or something in order to justify their own existence because they have literally nothing else going on. They need to um, have to, they must lash out at something in order to go, yep, we're still relevant because we're campaigning against them for whatever reason, um, unjustifiably so. Uh, and uh, I, I think this, this idea of sort of gatekeeping the community in that way isn't particularly helpful. I think the only caveat to that is that uh, when you say, when it comes to like gatekeeping or keeping certain people out of the community, there is uh, a time and a place for it, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to people that promote uh, ideologies or activities that I think are harmful to other people. So for example, you won't find too many people that are uh, particularly welcoming, welcoming of uh, you know, neo-Nazi or fascist micronations within the micronational community for obvious reasons. Um, I would also include uh, ideologies like communism in that. Not everyone does, but I have my own views on that, which I have gone over before. Um, but there's also things like online bullying or, you know, genuine threats of violence. The, the people that sort of uh, promote these sorts of activities, they should be, you know, to some extent or another, ostracised and uh, as best as possible removed from the community because they are promoting things that are you know harmful to others and it's just unreasonable and it doesn't give the micronational community at large a good name. But in terms of whether or not someone wants to create a silly looking flag with a smiley face on it or if someone wants to come up with a very you know silly name uh, you know, you, you know, ha you can't be an arbiter for that. You can't decide whether or not people should be a part of the community based on that. Um, and to be honest, you'd be wasting your time trying because there's nothing to stop someone from coming up with a micronation and identifying themselves as a micronation. Like I said, just think up a name and a flag, which incidentally, from my experience, there are some micronations that have come along and they've said, I'm setting up a micronation, I don't yet have a flag and I don't yet have a name. So you don't even need a name and a flag to set up a micronation. I mean, it's really... <sighs> so, yeah, again, I'm going on, on a bit of a rant at this point. I've sort of gone off script a little bit, uh, as I always do. Uh, but I just wanted to sort of reiterate as clearly and concisely as I can uh, for me, uh, 
that I don't think simulationism and secessionism uh, is a thing, and I don't think the the, the dif differentiating micronations between realist and fantasy is necessarily helpful or necessary. Um, if you are someone that's looking to associate with micronations that align with your own values and objectives, um, your plans and activities, then you know that there's a, a, a process in which you can do that, but trying to pigeonhole different micronations into these different categories is something that will never happen and never work because you will never get consensus on this issue. I think that's the, 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 the whole crux of the issue is that there is no consensus and there will never be consensus. So the best thing you can do if you are in the micronational community as a part of a micronation or the leader of a micronation or you're looking to get involved in micronationalism is to not worry about these sorts of things. Just figure out what you are trying to do and then look for micronations that are trying to do the same thing and then either become involved in those micronations or if you want, if you're that kind of micronation to associate or align with or you know, get a treaty or whatever else with those micronations, if that's something you want to do, if that's a route you want to go down. But don't worry so much about how other people categorise you. Don't worry about trying to categorise other micronations. Just look at what they're doing and then make your own judgments as to whether or not you're going to affiliate with them or not. And if, you know, they are a meme micronation or a joke micronation, um, then you don't have to associate them with them. We certainly don't. We don't associate with a huge swathe of micronations, even those that um, can often align with our own values and objectives. Um, because uh, for us, it's about mutual benefit. If there's no mutual benefit in that association, then we don't see any point in any formal affiliations. And so we're quite selective with who we uh, associate with. But again, I'm going on a bit of a rant, a bit of a tangent, as I always do. I just wanted to make this video to just give my two cents as to the whole simulationist versus secessionist dramas that keeps going on, that sort of ebbs and flows over time as to whether or how, how big an issue it is. Um, but I just wanted to offer my two cents on that. And uh, yeah, um, I've got one more video to make later today. Uh, it is going to be this entire setup. I'm literally going to press pause and record another video, which is going to be the questions and answers uh, video. I wanted to wait a little bit longer, uh, but I don't have a lot of time this week because it's actually my anniversary later this week. And then I am once again going to the Kingdom of Wayward uh, to uh, film and be a part of the whole uh, taking down the pine trees process which are then going to be logged, seasoned, stored and uh, at the Kingdom of Wayward and then sold um, later on and I look forward to sort of walking everyone through that process um, hopefully later in the week. Uh, but uh, if you did want to become a part of the Stomerian community then please feel free to become a citizen through our Patreon campaign, the link of which I shall leave in the description below as always. But otherwise if you enjoyed this video and then please feel free to give it a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.